Welcome to Here's the Thing. My name is Vince Negro, and with us on today's program is an interesting uh, man, is Nelson Sobrell. Nelson, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you, Vince. Um, chatting a little bit off uh, offset mm -hmm. uh, today with you. Uh, we got a couple things in common: neighborhoods and yeah. the schools. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that. Mm -hmm. um, you grew up in the uh, the, the uh, Dundas, give or take Dufferin area. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your upbringing, what, like in that neighborhood. Yeah, you know, it's always, you always romanticize the past, right? So it was, it was great. I, I couldn't have asked for a better upbringing, you know, it was, it was rough and tumble, but uh, um, I, th I feel like people were more witty and, and smart about their surroundings and stuff back then. And, um, you know, if you, if you were, you had to get smart to get around the neighborhood, you know yeah. what I mean? You had to avoid the wrong places and, and stuff. And, uh, it was a good community. It was it was tight knit. You know, there wasn't any cell phones, so you know, at night when your parents tried to get a hold of you, it was they would just find another kid and yep. and send them off, and they would find you. It was it was pretty cool that way. I have only fond memories of growing up. And, and your parents had a, a an establishment there. That, yeah. Uh, that tell us a little bit about that. They uh, they owned like the local like variety store in the neighborhood. So. Which was always a central Absolutely, kind of yeah. where people tend to go all the time. Yeah, and we carried all the, the Portuguese newspapers. So at the time, like we remember in the time before the internet, right. like that was like how yeah. they would find out about what's Their going news. back home, yeah. So like it was like a hub for people to hang out. So my home was like the community hangout. So it was, it was a little odd and surreal now looking back. But at the time for me, it was normal, right? Well, it's interesting you bring up the newspapers because, n not to deviate, but yeah. local newspapers, like the, the newspaper we put out in Millennial Stadium every Friday, is, I believe, uh, a great way that people still get their news, whether it's back home or get uh, educated about a lot of stuff. For sure. These, these, lo these local newspapers that we put out, I think it's, it's still a great thing. And you're right, mm -hmm. they were always meeting hubs. Yeah. Um, so growing up in that neighborhood, did you always have a, a, a musical uh, kind of tendencies that you knew you wanted to play music? How did that evolve? Well, you know, apparently the first word out of my mouth was baby, because I was trying mm -hmm. to sing along with the radio and stuff. My mom is a huge music fan and, and uh, she weaned me on like, the Beatles and the Stones and Elvis and, and all the so old So you had music. music in your background a lot. Always, were, I woke was up, always around you. I woke up every day to my mom playing the oldie station. So every morning it would be like Tom Jones or like Muddy Waters or Otis Redding and stuff. So it was always around me. And uh, it was, as, as far as I can remember, is all I ever wanted to do was just play, be a musician and play music. Yeah. So Nelson growing up, tell mm. me who Nelson, you know, we, you went to Harbor Collegiate. We both yep. went to Harbor Collegiate. Yep. Which, which public school did you go to? St. Veronica's. St. Veronica's. Yeah. Growing up, tell us a little bit about who you were growing up. What kind of a kid were you? Um, you know, kind of, I would try to fit in with everybody, but, you know, uh, a weird kid because, you know, I wasn't a sports kid. Right. So it's kind of weird when you're growing up with all the boys and, and everyone's into hockey and, and, and soccer and stuff like that. And I wasn't, but I tried to be. And I was always into music. And I'm, I'm also not, like, not a fan of, like, cars and, like, other boy-type yeah, stuff, right? right? So, but, you know, I had my, my friends. I still fit in. Um, and uh, hung around the neighborhood as much as I could, and uh, I had an older sister, so you know it was kind of easier to know more of the older kids as well. And um, so I, I kind of fit in, I kind of didn't. I, you know, my mom also put me in figure skating when I was a kid, which probably didn't help. Yeah. <laughs> growing up, and uh, especially around the McCormick's boys. Shout out to McCormick's. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was. I, like I said, I don't have nothing but fond memories of growing up. It was it was a good neighborhood. It was a good community of people, you know, with warts and all. Your yeah. your uh, your your music background, your guitar playing was mm. that self taught? Did you go to school? Tell tell us a little bit about how you actually got involved. So predominantly self taught. I did take a few lessons with a guy when I first started playing, and he kind of just helped me train my ear and figure out um, how to find the notes that I would hear and uh, express myself through the instrument, which is basically what it's all about. You want to be able to express what you're feeling out through an instrument, whatever instrument that is, your, vo your voice, a bass, piano, whatever. But predominantly self-taught and then just, as soon as I kind of figured out a little bit of the guitar, I just started playing as much as I could with friends. So, you know, and now I've come, kind of come full circle and I'm starting to learn more of the technical aspects and the, you know, of, of music and stuff. So I wouldn't, say that that's the, a good way to go. I know people that have gone the other way and are just as wonderful musicians. Whatever I think gets you to that point is, is relevant, right? 
for me it was being self-taught and just playing along with records and, and playing with friends and such. Off yeah. camera you're telling me that you uh, you did martial arts mm -hmm. for a while yeah. and you made a transition a little bit from what you were doing and you kind of did the full-time martial arts where you actually competed. Yeah. Tell us how that transition uh, uh, affected your life actually mm -hmm. in terms of where you are. You seem to me a, a peaceful, tranquil guy mm. that's got great karma, just to let you know that Thank I, you. makes sense. Likewise. But you've got this calmness about you. Um, and when you had that transition, was that, I mean, you've gone from, you went from a, a calm music playing to a, mm. uh, a jujitsu, whatever. Thai boxing. Thai, yeah. thai boxing you were doing. Tell us how that transition was and, and how the effects of that uh, state of your life when you came back to music helped you or, 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 or made you a better person? Um, I, th I think uh, music, martial arts and, and meditation, which I, I'm also an advocate of, they all kind of put you in the moment. Right. But you can't be anywhere else. Like if you're playing music and you're thinking about your taxes, you're gonna mess up. Right. Same thing with, with martial arts. If you're training and you're, you're sparring with somebody, you can't be anywhere else. Um, it puts you in the moment, it helps you to focus and helps to, to alleviate the stress of daily life. I, Martial arts have always been kind of part part of my life. Like growing up, it was Kiss and Bruce Lee were like my heroes. You know, um, they were both kind of always intertwined throughout my life. And uh, when I did start to go into competing professionally uh, in martial arts, it had music had hit a kind of a point where I was kind of I needed a break. You know, like I kind of hit like a frustrating wall of like I've tried a bunch of stuff and I kind of feel stuck in the mud. And I kind of just flipped it around, and I just I just did martial arts for a bunch of years, and I and I pro fought. I had a bunch of uh, professional mixed martial arts fights and, and Thai boxing fights and jujitsu competitions, and it was a nice way to kind of cleanse the palate, so to speak. So when I did come back to music, um, I had a, I had a different perspective to like to be more present in the moment and to breathe and to you know I had a. a an easier way to alleviate stress. And, and I find that martial, and I still to this day, I teach and train um, regularly at uh, Tiger Jiu Jitsu, tigerbjj.ca. Um, I teach there every day at noon. Is that the one at Ozzy and Tune and Blur? Uh, no, it? it's at uh, Dundas and uh, Sterling, okay. just past the, the yeah. No Frills there, yeah. So we're up there and I teach every day at noon and it's a, it's a wonderful part of my day where I just, it's like a physical release of stress. And when I come back to music, you know, it's really important to approach your music without that.